Uh, I mean, you don't have to. Uh, you can, you can go find whatever TSP files you want, but the benefit of using those TSP files is I've already converted them to JSON format instead of the TSP lib format, which is it's old, non-standard, and kind of weird. So I converted them to JSON, so they're a lot easier to parse and work with. And Python has a JSON library that'll just load it up into a dictionary for you already. So it'll make things easy. But like I warned in the assignment description, I do strongly recommend before you do any evolution, you take the, the like list and create like an adjacency matrix, like a distance matrix between from point to point. So you don't have to calculate the Euclidean distance every single time. You just, it's a lookup table, lookup matrix. Anyways, other questions? Yeah. So the first five points are just like get a working like implementation working. Doesn't matter like if it's like the most basic mutation, no crossover. That's like doesn't the first five points. Exactly. The next five points will be like actually play around with it and make it better. Uh, it's well, I don't remember if it's five points, right, but five, what, yeah. what however many points. Yeah. You just kind of you start with so all of the points, with the exception of like getting it working. Assuming there's no any glaring issues. No one's going to go through and be like, oh, you lose a point here, you lose a point there, right? Assuming it's working and there's no, like, glaring issues, you just get five points, okay, yeah. right? Um, like, at this stage, getting a working GA should be trivial, especially considering I give you multiple. <laughs> but uh, it's all the extra stuff. It's doing more gives you more points. Yeah. And as described before, I mean, if... If you choose not to do like the report, like no one's gonna be like, oh, well you didn't do the report. It's just, okay, you've chosen not to get those points. But there's more points you can get elsewhere. There's a total of like, what, what was it, 130 points or something that's available in the course. So you've got flexibility on what you choose to do. But yeah, answers your question good. Other questions? All right, so last time, I was making a point about all of the, you know, breaking down problems into systems, like really thinking about them like that. And I realized at the end of the day, I'm really not describing anything. When I break something down into the, the systems at play and the parts of the systems, like input, system, output, I'm not describing anything that's not already accounted for in how we just generally talk about things. But by breaking it down and being very clear about different parts of each thing, it helps us to talk about the individual parts and it helps us, it helps guide us in our decision making for how best to frame a problem, how best to design our algorithms. And everything here so far is not about evolutionary computation. This is really for any, Hell, it's not even for like machine learning AI. This is for like anything when you're coming to like designing programs or anything. This is not an evolutionary computation thing. This is remarkably general. <clears throat> and then I was talking last time how, you know, it's kind of interesting how like systems themselves evolve over time by the sheer fact that there is, it's got an ability to persist. And, you know, they have a way to change over time. And on top of that, each system is probably made up of multiple subsystems that are themselves made up of multiple subsystems, which are made up of multiple subsystems. And, and then the systems at the top level are, of course, part of, are part of a bigger system. Like, it's all systems everywhere, everywhere. So... Let's talk about a remarkably simple system, a cellular automata. So an elementary cellular automata is a very simple system of rules, okay? Remarkably simple. Given a one-dimensional sequence, uh, we call, it's, it's really, it's like a list of values, but we can call it like a, a linear sequence of cells that are either like alive or dead. Create the sequence's next generation based on some set of rules, based on 
each cell's current state and the state of its neighbors, and based on some rules. So here's an example of, here's a linear sequence, here's the set of rules, and here's the next generation. Take a moment, look at this picture to make sense of how it's working. So here, it's looking at that, and that's what it produces. Here, it sees that, produces that. That it produces the dot, right? And then when we get to this one, it's going to be this again. It's going to make a black dot, yep. And then that one, another black dot, right? This particular set of rules right here is called rule 30. And I'm pretty sure I'd tell you why it's called rule 30 in a moment. Oh, wait, yeah, here we go. Um, it means rule 30 based on First of all, we count. So here is 0, 1 in binary, 2, 3. You see how it's like 0, 1, 1, 3, right? I'm seeing blank faces, which makes me unclear. If, OK. And the reason it's rule 30 is, well, if you take this binary sequence here, 0, 1, 1, well, I guess from here, most significant, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, well, that's 30. <clears throat> so this one's called rule 30. Very similar. Okay. That's actually the next thing we're going to talk about. So spoiler. So, given, let me let me ask you this. Based on what you see here, how many possible rules are there? Rule thirty is the whole set here. Two fifty-six. Why? Because there's two to the eight, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because think, the first rule would be, no matter what you see, all zeros. And then this would be a 1, all zeros. And then this would be a 1, but the rest are zeros, right? So it would count up all the way up to like 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So that's just where the name came from. But this is rule 30. This is one layer. And this is how we generate the next layer, the next generation. And often, we like to show these things kind of like this, all right? Now, I'll work my way to, like, where each line, maybe I've got another picture. Hold on. Spoilers here. Each line is a generation. But a lot of times what they'll do is you start with a single point. One, one. And you hit go. And then you generate whatever pattern you generate based on the rules that you see, based on the rules. So since each cell's value is determined by the three cells' previous state, there's a total of eight patterns. Uh, three, since it's based on the current cell, yeah, th three, the current cell and the neighboring two. Each of the eight patterns can produce either a zero or one, meaning there's a possibility of 256. Right? Yeah. Is there any rhyme or reason to which one produces zero and which one produces one? It's, it's just I can create all possible 256 rules, which are the, this. When I say rule 30, rule 30 is this whole thing. There's 256 possible ones based on the number of configurations of these patterns. And this just happens to be rule 30, right? Rule 31 would be exactly this, but also a, a dot right here. 32 would be 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on. Cool? Uh, the above rule is named rule 30, since that is the binary number 30. And by repeatedly applying these very simple, would you agree that these rules are remarkably simple? Of course. There's, not, there's no particular, it doesn't really seem overly complex. But by repeating these very simple rules, you can get really interesting and complex patterns. So for example, here's rule 30. If you start from a single point, imagine starting from a row right here where only the middle dot was on. And you hit go, well, one single dot produces a dot, but this also produces a dot, and this also produces a dot. So we would get a row of three dots. That's, this starts with one dot, and then the next row would have three dots, and then follow the pattern as you go. Pretty cool pattern, right? I think it's pretty neat. It's pretty. It, I mean, this obviously stopped eventually. This is particularly 200 steps. If you click this, it'll actually take you to Wolfram Alpha, which is where I used to jet. Oh, that's rule 22. 
Wait, was that rule 22? Here, I thought I had rule 30 here. Oh, yeah, this is rule 22. I lied. This is rule 22 being applied 200 times. So if you visit Wolfram Alpha, if I click it, rule 0. This is what happens if you apply rule 0 to a single dot. Nothing. Rule 0 is no matter what you see, you produce nothing. Not particularly interesting. Rule 1. You actually get that pattern. Well, that's the pattern you get. Kind of interesting, right? Rule 2. That's what happens, that's what happens if you apply Rule 2. Cool, right? And you think like, okay, cool, yeah, okay, by applying these system of rules. Do you agree? These are remarkably simple. There's nothing overly sophisticated about them. Well, oops. All right, here's what I'm saying. Yeah, go, if you're following along, go to that link and just take a, take a minute. <coughs> And try a couple of rules. Do whatever the hell you want. Try a few dozen rules. Keep track of the ones you find the most interesting. It's <laughs> fun. I'm going to walk around. I'm just going to, I want to see what people are generating, if there's anything interesting I'm, I'm noticing. What's that one? I went to 58. That's a cool one. Yeah, I don't, like, that's above the, I think, right? 58? Yeah, 258. Oh, 258. Oh, it looks like it's actually a slightly different type of cellular automaton oh, that see. looks, uh, it looks like it's in a different, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's neat. That's a cool one. What number was that one? 153. What's that one? 129. It looks like the inverse of uh, 22. Yeah. That's a cool one. What number is that? Uh, that was 30. Huh. Ooh, that one's pretty cool. What one was that one? 135. Yeah, I do like that one. I went to the one twenty eighty ish because I figured it would be like an imbalance of the living and the right. living, so it would be more likely to be like that. I, what I like about that one is like the two hundred steps looks like it's like I'm looking at like a like shaded grid or something. Exact that's exactly what it looks like to me, which I think is really cool. Like it's got a shadow. Whoa, that's a cool one. What's that one? Ninety nine. Ninety nine, yeah, that's cool. It's kind of funny how like some of them will only go, yeah. Now what were the most interesting ones you found? First and foremost, over here we had 258, right? Which of course is, two, is bigger than 256, but this is actually a different set 
The previous one was called elementary cellular automaton. This is called a one-dimensional cellular automata. And you can see that the pattern actually looks at one, two, three, four cells to determine the child. Uh, child's not the right, but like the next generation state, let's say. So this is a different, and there's a number of that many rules, which is neat. Anyways, uh, rule 99, <laughs> you, pardon me, you did 99, right? And I thought rule 99 was pretty neat looking, All right? Yeah, and then you have 131, I think. 131. Yeah, that's another cool one. What, yeah, and what I think is cool about this one is it kind of looks like it's like a, like a pyramid, right? Like it's got like that three-dimensional kind of feel to it. Now, if you hadn't noticed down here, so this is like what happens if you start with the initial condition of a single point. These are initial conditions of just like arbitrary starting, not a single point, but an arbitrary, arbitrary pattern of zeros and ones. <clears throat> and you also did 135, which was a pretty cool one. Yeah, I like that one. Let's look at 30. And then I think the one Cole found looked like an inverse of the 22 one we were looking at. When you say inverse, what do you, what do you mean? Like, like switch all the black to um, ah, I see. I gotcha. I gotcha. I mean, I guess you could generate the inverse by just, you could look at the pattern and be like, okay, if I change all the zeros and ones. So I've tried doing that and it didn't work. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. So I think it's because the initial condition is so different. That's a good point. Yeah, I guess the initial condition would have to start as like all black, well, yeah. And what was the, oop. <coughs> uh, did anyone else find another particularly interesting one? What was the one you had? One, five, three. Yeah, it's kind of, to, to me, it's pretty cool when, like, you see it, like, only do half, which is pretty neat. Oh, yeah, for sure. I love it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Now, first of all, let me ask you something. What, what, when you were looking for the patterns, what made a pattern interesting to you. What about the patterns you looked at, what, the ones that stood out to you, what was it about them that made them interesting? Varying so, so like, varying, pa so there's a pattern, but it's not really a pattern, but there's a pattern. Uh, yeah, that's a good way to put it, right? It's like, well, there's like this repeating pattern, but it's actually kind of like different. And what were you going to say? Symmetry. symmetry. Yeah, I agree. The symmetry? Absolutely. What else? Anything else that kind of made anything stand out to you? So it's kind of got like a fractal yeah. thing to it. Like you could keep zooming in, it would actually just keep repeating the same patterns as you go. That's kind of cool. Now, what's interesting is. I mean, you might say, okay, cool, great. We were able to create these fun little patterns with such simple little rules, but they're just still, at the end of the day, they're simple little rules. But what's kind of neat is you can find similar things in nature, right? There's a, there's a cell, of a, a shell of a sea snail, right? And it's got a pattern similar to this in real life, which is pretty neat. But I mean, maybe that, that kind of makes sense, right? You know, at the end of the day, our DNA is just kind of like all of the proteins and whatnot that make up living things. Really, it's just following some set of instructions. So why would we be surprised by a simple set of instructions being encoded somewhere that gets decoded by proteins and all of the other fancy mechanics in your cells, right? 
So that's kind of neat. Now, give, give me a second here. I want to make sure. Yes, OK, cool. So Conway's Game of Life. Raise your hand if you've heard of this one before. OK, cool. If not, maybe you're familiar with it, but you're just not sure. So Conway's Game of Life is another really interesting simple system, but this one actually works in two dimensions. It's not just based on one line. It works in two dimensions. And the rules for Conway's Game of Life are this. Any live cell, a live cell is a cell with like a 1, OK? Uh, any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies off for the next step, the next iteration of the system. Any live cell with two or three live neighbors is left alone. Any live cell with uh, more than three live neighbors will die off. And any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors will become alive. That's, that's, the, that's the rules. All right? And with these simple set of rules, you can actually create some pretty crazy stuff, right? <coughs> <coughs> and people are so, people will geek out about Conway's Game of Life so hard. There's like this giant wiki of different like initial conditions that can create some really interesting patterns. Yeah? Have you seen the person who made a computer of course I have. Of RAM in Conway's Game of Life? You can make Conway's Game of Life yeah, in Conway's <laughs> Game of Life. So, First and foremost, do you agree? These are remarkably simple rules. There's nothing crazy here. Really simple. And by the way, the values in here are, they're not arbitrary, but we could change these, and we'd have the different things happen. But this is Conway's Game of Life. And you can actually go to this website, and you can, how do I, I want to draw, draw. Let's see what happens. Play. Whoa. Look at that. Neat, right? Will this end? Will it ever terminate? You, maybe? Oh, it looked like it got, so what we could say is, uh, I suppose we need to define what do we mean when we say, like, does it end? Oh, there we go. Come on, get out. You can do it. <laughs> See ya. It's zooming away. Another one. Look at that. Cool. Now, of course, you all know I set these initial conditions so precisely to get exactly this, right? <laughs> right? Like, that was intentional, Practice obviously. Yeah, you know, once you get a feel, I can, yeah, that'll be perfect. All these gliders escaping. Now, at the end of the day, whenever you start with initial conditions, you don't know if it's going to end or not. You don't really know. with any arbitrary initial conditions, right? These, assuming it goes on for infinity and it doesn't loop back around, which it very well might. It might loop back around. So those gliders might come right back in here eventually. And so if I'm looking at this right here, ignoring the gliders, we have to ask ourselves, OK, is this, is this done? But this is what we would call like metastable, where it's, it's not frozen. There's some like spinners, right? But it's meta it's stable. Okay? But those gliders, where'd they go? Let's see if we can find them. Oh. Come on, let me zoom out. How do I zoom out? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Click to control. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna be oh, I could wow, let's kill them. <laughs> you think you could get away from me? Yeah. 
course, you can have a lot of fun with Conway's Game of Life. The rules are so simple, though, right? And if you want to really geek out, you can go. There's a wiki for looking up different patterns to get other interesting things, which is pretty crazy. Where do we, where do we want to zoom? Let's uh, see what's going on. Oh, more gliders are escaping. Everyone wants to leave this chaos. For those of you who are wondering, these, they're a pattern that's called like a glider. And it means it'll like perpetuate, it'll just go. And then you can create things called like glider guns, which are things that can generate gliders, which is pretty neat. And it's, you know, <coughs> I can create a glider. Like, I wonder what's going to happen. It looks like there's a glider right here. It's going to collide. What's going to happen? Let's, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's see. Will it ever, like, kind of stop, or is it going to continue to do this forever? I don't know. Will more gliders come out of it? Yeah, look. Maybe that was the same one. It escaped. It turned around and was like, no, I'm out. Maybe more gliders will come. I don't know. It's pretty chaotic, though, isn't it? Look, it, it's, that little cluster, it, it's refusing to die. It almost looked like another... It won't quit, will it? Oh, no. And where'd the glider go? Looks it, like uh, it, it got block and just fell. obliterated. No, yeah. oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Tried so hard to escape. It did. But like, you know, if I can come up with a set of initial conditions for this really, again, simple system. If I, if I can keep track of initial conditions that create interesting patterns, maybe I can kind of like leverage that to do interesting things with it. I'll, I'll, should I let it keep running? I'll let it keep running. Before the end of class, we'll have another look. All right. So here's another one. Yeah, this is called a, a puffer, right? And it, it'll just continue on like this and create just chaos in its path, right? Pretty neat. What's kind of neat here is, let's go to this link here. You could actually create logic gates. Come on, let's see if we can find. Here. What does it, I wish it had like a, not gate. The gate takes a single input stream. I wish it was a oh, one. One is the input stream. What? Okay. Two collides with stream three. As a result, the output along glider stream unhindered. I'm not clear which part's the not gate. Maybe it's all of this. Maybe now for the alternative case, there's an input. Oh, and so this is. Oh, hold. Oh, I see. So this is false. It's returning true. This is true. Four returns false. So would you agree that this is effectively, this is not, right? If I think of this incoming stream as true, as voltage, we've effectively got not. Input, output. This whole thing is the gate. Pretty neat, right? Now here's and. I'm guessing one and two are the input. True, false.
false true, and then well, let's see what happens when we see true true, because that's the interesting one, right? Let's see, where's the output going to be? Because this one should be producing output, but where's it going to come from? Might take a moment to... There we go, out of here. I'm guessing that's the output of the, of the end. And as these have run, there's no output. Oh, they stopped. Or, let's see. point is we can make OR gates. If you can make an AND gate, an OR gate, a NOT gate, you can do whatever the hell you want to do. You have a computational system. You could actually do exactly what he was saying. You could, you could legitimately build a, simulate a computer inside Conway's Game of Life. Conway's Game of Life was four stupid rules. And you can make a whole computer out of it. Simulate it. But it is. It's there. Meaning, <clears throat> even with such a simple system, you all agreed Conway's Game of Life hilariously simple. Four rules on a grid. That's it. But with such a simple system, we could actually make a computer. If we can make a computer, that means we can simulate Conway's Game of Life inside Conway's Game of Life. And if I can simulate Conway's game of life inside Conway's game of life, what else could I do? I could simulate Conway's game of life in Conway's game of life in Conway's game of life. And so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. There's nothing stopping me from that. Conway's game of life, from this simple set of systems, we could like, towards infinity, keep simulating itself. I think, that, I think I might even have a link to a video kind of showing it. Make sure there's no audio, though, because the, video, the, the audio is really annoying, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So here's an example Conway's Game of Life. It's, it's a minute 30. I don't know why it's got the little... Not loading. I'm pretty sure they have a longer one that will actually go like more and more and more. Look at this, this is still going. Assuming it's actually still running when it's not in focus. It might not be, to be honest, I don't know. Oh no, oh. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but okay. There is definitely a symbol at the top. Yeah, there. Here, let's keep an eye on these gliders. If we come back later, then we'll know it stopped actually executing when it wasn't in focus. So if I can make Conway's Game of Life in Conway's Game of Life, that means I can make Conway's Game of Life in Conway's Game of Life in Conway's Game of Life. And that's a simple system. There's more complex systems around us. 
And with such a simple system, I can actually do something so remarkably interesting. If I can simulate a computer, Conway's game of life <coughs> is Turing complete. That system is Turing complete. Another interesting thing, if we go back to here, and what was another one? 110? One ten is also rule one ten, an even simpler thing. It's Turing complete. Such simple systems can generate such immense complexity. You can harness the rules of these systems to compute anything that we can compute. Fat, like that's mind blowing if you ask me. So if we have such a simple system that can generate immense complexity and sophistication, just based on these iterative rules, what can we do with more interesting and more complex systems? Ah, it looks like it doesn't iterate. Shoot. Oh, that's a shame. All right, well, I'll close it then. Both are remarkably simple. They can produce remarkably complex and seemingly chaotic random behavior. But it's not random because it all came from in initial conditions. If I gave you the same initial conditions, you can generate the exact same thing. Both don't have any form of intelligence. They just follow the rules starting from their initial conditions, but they're Turing complete. They can perform any computation any other Turing complete system can, like your typical desktop computer or your laptop. They can do that. You can play Doom in Conway's Game of Life. I really wouldn't want to, but you could. Now, I've mentioned the invisible hand before, right? And has anyone by chance ever heard of the, 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 sh the relatively short economics essay called I Pencil. It's from decades ago. But the whole point of this essay, which I would actually recommend you read, you can find it easy on Google Scholar. The whole point of this essay is who knows how to make <coughs> a pencil from scratch? And the answer is nobody. No one can do it. Think of all of the things that have to come together to make a, something as simple as a pencil. Did you, did you procure the, the graphite? Who got the graphite? How did you get the graphite? I mean, maybe you can buy the graphite and you can buy the wood and stick it together and call it a pencil. But you didn't. There, there's a lot of things in between. Did you cut down the tree? Did you cut, cut it up? Did you transport it? Who got the gas to put in the vehicle to transport the wood to get it to you? There's a lot at play. But every single person there is just doing their job. The person cutting down the tree isn't going like, I'm making a pencil. They're just cutting down a tree because that's their job. The person driving the truck isn't thinking they're making a pencil. They're just driving wood around because it's their job. Every single individual is just doing their thing. But that can come together to produce something interesting. Right? No one knows how it's happening. This is like emergent behavior. When you have people like just things following their own self-interest, following the rules, doing their thing, but something more interesting and like complex kind of arises out of that, that's emergence. And that's really interesting. Conway's game of life, the cellular automatons, they, there's emergence there. Now, before we carry on with this conversation, I need to warn you all of a big uh, pitfall called teleology. It's not good to explain phenomenon in terms of the purpose they serve.
Nothing in this universe exists for a purpose, as far as we know. But it's explaining a phenomenon in terms of its purpose, in terms of the purpose they serve, rather than of the cause by which they arise. That's like a teleology, right? Why do we have hands? To grab things. That's not why we have hands, right? All of the things that had to happen for the, for the last however many millions of years, we didn't evolve to have hands so we could grab things. That didn't happen. We just, we have hands, oh, we can grab things, right? It's, this, is, this is a common pitfall. People, when thinking of these things, uh, that they'll fall into. Remember, so little things are really by design. So much of what happens around us is emergence. It's just happening. Now, someone may have noticed the emergence, and harnessed it for something. Someone, there are things like, there is someone that says, I want to make a pencil, so I'm going to buy the stuff I need to do it. Don't get me wrong. But in general, nothing in this universe exists for a reason. They're just there. The exception being things like humans create. <clears throat> All right, we'll stop here and pick up whatever next class is. Do we have any last questions before we wrap up?